Hey there, welcome to the Science Hutch. I'm Hutch and this is the science and our very special science today is learning how to apply ver charts for DC circuits wired in parallel. And we've already done um, a video working with circuits wired in series and we looked at some adults view resistances so carelessly as an acronym to remember that series adds voltage drops to get the total voltage drop for all the resistors, you add the resistances to get the total resistance, but you're going to have the same current through every resistor. We dealt with creating a series circuit with these components, uh, three different resistors, R1, 2, and 3, with 1, 2, and 3 ohms respectively, and using a battery that provided 9 volts of potential difference. And if you'd like to see more about that, then check out our video um, on that, and it's linked in the description. Then I gave you two other practice problems and we did a video to answer those. So that's kind of the format we're going to follow here. So let's go ahead and go with it. We're going to use the same components. We have the same resistors of 1, 2, and 3 ohms. We have a battery of 9 volts. So we're going to wire them in parallel. We're going to see a lot of differences pop out of this. So here we go. First of all, I'd just like to show you just an idea of when you wire in parallel, um, what you're really doing. You're creating three separate paths for these resistors. So if this is R1, it gets its own loop, and then you would have a separate loop for R2 that gets all the way back to the battery independently. So R1 could go out, not even exist, or not even be connected, and R2 would be fine and still stay lit. And then uh, you would have also R3 on you know, its own separate loop like so. And so they they each receive the entire voltage uh, from the battery. So they're all going to have the same 9 volt drop across R1, 2, and 3, and they can operate independently of each other. But we don't typically draw them in these concentric circles. We draw them with uh, more um, right angles. And so let's do that together here. So draw this with me. We're going to do wire coming out of our battery here. We're going to run over and we're going to do a squiggle for R1, connect that back to the battery and label it R1, and then continue on. These are called junctions here, but we're splitting the wire and we're going to do R2 and do another junction and give another loop for R3. There we go. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, now we've got our circuit wired in parallel, and let's create a ver chart. I've already got that kind of ready to go to keep the video moving. So here's our ver chart. We have a row for each resistor, and then we have a row for the battery, which could be viewed as maybe a totals row as well. And then we have columns for V, I, R, V, I, R, and PIV, a column for power. All right, now the weird thing about parallel. Here's a memory tool for parallel to help us get through this. I'm going to put this down here. So we're going to say, now it's kind of around Halloween time when I'm recording this, so we've made a Halloween acronym. So we say pretty, spooky, vampires are currently in... Revolt. Oh no, the vampires are in revolt. And what that secretly tells us, if we look at the first letter for each word in that statement, we're going to unlock a statement about parallel. Parallel, so P for pretty, P for parallel, S for spooky, S for same. In parallel, you're going to find the same what? The same voltage drops as I just discussed when I drew how it kind of works in the wiring. But you're going to add A for R, A for add, the currents, the currents, and you're going to inversely add, inversely, nah, not an E, inversely with a Y, inversely add your resistances to get the total or equivalent resistance of all those parallel branches. So we need to keep that in mind. And this is actually a specific application of two rules that we call Kirchhoff's, Kirchhoff's loop rule that governs 
conservation of energy and deals with our voltage drops and the junction rule which governs conservation of charge and deals with the currents and how they add up there and uh, so that's those are key rules in AP Physics 1. All right let's get back to it. So in parallel first of all we are going to experience the same voltage drop for every parallel branch and so each resistor is on its own parallel branch and so each resistor is going to get the full voltage drop of 9 volts and so typically we're going to see these light bulbs be brighter and we're going to run that 9 volt battery down faster as they experience the entire 9 volt drop for each resistor so we get that kind of for free and that goes back to parallel has the same voltage drops and we've just applied Kirchhoff's loop rule and the way that works is that each resistor has its own loop and so there's three loops going on there. Now that looks ugly so I'm going to get rid of it. Boop, boop, boop. So that was easy. Now let's put in the resistances. We have one, two, and three ohms. So let's go ahead and insert those here in our chart. One ohm, two ohms, three ohms. And then in series, you would just add those together, but that doesn't happen in parallel. In parallel, the R's have to add inversely. So this is the equation we're going to use. Your sigma R, your total resistance, or your equivalent resistance for those three resistors is big parentheses to the negative one power, so inverse power of 1 over R plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. And let's go ahead and uh, substitute. So there's our equation. Let's substitute the values. 1 over 1 ohm plus 1 over 2 ohms plus 1 over 3 ohms. And that's the negative 1 power. Do not forget that last negative 1 power. A lot of physics noobs are going to forget that. Now, don't forget when you're adding fractions with different denominators, you got to find that common denominator. And for 1, 2, and 3, that denominator is going to be 6. So we're going to inflate all of these so that they are over 6. So we have 6 over 6. Then we have 3 over 6 for 1 half. And then we have 2 over 6 for 1 third. And that's again to the negative 1 power. And then let's go ahead and solve this out. So 6 plus 3 is 9. 9 plus 2 is 11. And so we have 11 over 6 ohmses to the negative 1 power. So that's going to end up flipping and going 6 ohms over 11. And then that is going to be 0 0.54 repeating forever. I'm just going to round it to 0 0.545 ohms. And that my friends, is going to go right in there. That is our equivalent resistance. That's the resistance that the battery is working against when you look at all the resistors together as one. All right, now that we've unlocked, we've really unlocked two in every row. So now we can use ver to calculate all of the currents. So really you'd have nine volts times the I1 uh, well, 9 volts equals I1 times 1 ohm of resistance. And so you would divide. 9 volts divided by 1 ohm gives you 9 amps of current. That's a lot of current, but this is just an example that we made up to work this. And then 9 divided by 2 is 4.5 amps, and 9 divided by 3 is 3 amps, and then 9 divided by 0.545 is 16.5 amps. And I'm rounding a little bit, but... Now, another thing about parallel is that in parallel, in parallel, you have the same voltage drops, but you're going to add your currents together. And so let's just use that fact to verify that we've done everything correctly. Those currents should add up to the total amount of current. So we should have 9 plus 4.5 plus 3, and that should all add together to be 16.5. And kalu kale, hurrah, huzzah, it does add up to 16.5. So we were able to verify our ver chart independently. Awesome. Now, let's continue. Let's make it a verp chart with that P, and let's find the power 
that is dissipating across each resistor. And then if these were light bulbs, we could imagine and predict which light bulb would be the brightest if we were to wire them in parallel. So P is I times V, so we're going to have I times V for each row. So 9 times 9 is a whopping 81 watts. That's huge. 9 times 4.5 is going to be 40 0.5 watts and 9 times 3 is going to be 27 watts and then 9 times 16.5 is going to be 148 whoops there we go there we go we fixed it ha 148.5 watts now the cool thing about power is that power is an amount of energy being used or transferred or tra transitioned every second. And so it's amounts of energy. So 81 watts of, uh, of joules every second is 81 joules every second. And so 81 plus 40.5 plus 27, those are amounts of energy. We're just adding the amounts. We should be able to add those to 148.5. And if you put it in your calculator, they do add up to 148.5. So we've just found two ways to verify that we did our verb chart correctly. And let's go ahead and rank these light bulbs by the brightness R1 is going to be the brightest because it's got 81 watts. Power is your link to brightness. Brightness. Bink. And so then R2 is going to have the second brightest bulb, and R3 is going to be the third brightest bulb. And so that would look like over here on our bulbs. Let's go ahead and color them bright. So R1 is going to be the brightest. <laughs> shining so brightly and then R2 is gonna be yes it's pretty bright it's pretty bright not quite as bright as the other one R3 is gonna be the dimmest of them all so there's kind of how that would look and thank you for physicsing with me and if you would like to physics some more and practice this yourself then I'm gonna give you that opportunity so here you go Check these out. See if you can do these on your own and then join me in the follow-up video where I give you the answers to them. All right. Thanks for physicsing with me. This was the science hutch. I was the hutch. This awesomeness was the science and you're the physicist. Happy physicsing. Boom. Knowledge.